for such a powerful. Uh, I had a prior request. Powerful. Sister Bishop. I'm sorry? I, I, I have a, a, a kind of a. I'm sorry. I'm in a car, so I'm on my way to the hospital. Bless Jesus. Who, who is this? Carol uh, Barnes. Uh, I'm going, I just left the drug house. I don't want to give out names. Okay, uh, okay. I'm going to the hospital to pray for a drug dealer, drug addict. Uh, I okay. picked up the phone this morning, and they're probably going, they refilled with the Holy Ghost in the car. It was praying in the spirit for five minutes. I dropped them off. I'm up here at the hospital going in, and I'm trying to reach them before they die. Hospice is with them, and okay. I want to, you know, they believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe uh, in God. They just, uh, I need to get there to let them to know to repent and that God can save them so they can step into okay. the light. Amen, Jesus, amen. Let's just come together real quick uh, because it's now prayer Lord, for prodigal. Um, thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. We, we just need you, God. Lord, 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 we pray for this emergency situation for this prodigal, God. Lord God, spare his life, Lord God. We just lift up our voices, God, and ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we plead your blood, oh God. Save you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, be with me. Anoint Carol, Lord. Anoint her, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Burns. And thank you, Sister Billy Jean, for allowing me to do this. I love you, and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning on this beautiful Friday morning. We have had an explosion of prayer and intercession and praise since the early morning hour. I, I give God thanks for his visitation. Uh, we, we want to give plenty of time to our guests today. This is a very special day. We've looked forward to this day. Uh, Sister Diane Long and Donald Long over Hope Ministries has invited Dr. James Banks and his wife Carrie. Um, I want to welcome them to this prayer conference line. This morning, I want to welcome um, all, any of our ministers that have joined us. Uh, I thank you for those of you that have been faithful to our Partners in Prayer call. Thank you, uh, Brother and Sister Lumpkin. I, I have access to a back office. I, I welcome all of you. Uh, we want to just move aside as quickly as possible. We just want to fill this hour and give our guests plenty of time. But what I'm going to ask you to do is please share this. Uh, share this because there have been uh, backsliders and uh, people that have that are searching about the salvation message popping in and out of our Facebook Live. We are a prayer apostolic prayer group, but we also are soul winners, and we want to reach the backslider. We want to reach them with the message that that we're waiting, and that God has extended the invitation for them to come back to the Father's house. So praise the Lord. Share this. Invite someone. You can tag a friend, and uh, we are going to get started as quickly as possible. So with that, I'm Sister Billie Jean Bishop with Partners in Prayer, and uh, Sister Diane is my dearest friend. I love her. It seems like the more I know her, the more I love her. She is faithful in prayer and intercession, loves our backsliders, loves those that are praying for backsliders, loves parents. Of backsliders. Her and Brother Don have been faithful. We heard Dustin's testimony, their son, yesterday. Please go back. We're saving all of these recordings because we want you to be ministered to. We want to encourage you. And you can use these uh, recordings to send to someone that's working with backsliders or a backslider themselves. There's been some powerful testimonies. So with that, Lord, I ask you, God, to continue to manifest your power. I pray your anointing upon us. Give us ears to hear. Give us hearts to obey what the Spirit of God will say to us. Lord, I believe, God, that we're living in a day, God, that even beyond what we can even ask or think is being loose 
loosed and released upon the earth. God, you are powerfully restoring our backsliders to the house of God. You are doing a great and mighty work, Lord, and I ask God that you would orchestrate, guide, and lead. I pray as we hear what the word of God that goes forth and the testimony, God, that goes forth this very day from Dr. Banks and his wife and, and brother and sister Long and anyone, the Lord, that is on this line, that we would heed to what the Spirit is saying to this church. And this very day in this hour, very hour, God, we give you praise, God, for sparing the man that's in in the hospital and ICU right now. We're believing, God, that you're going to spare his life and that he's going to come out of there, Lord, with a testimony, God. Thank you for answering prayer. And I ask it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. A little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to mute everyone uh, but our ministers and our guests. And so if you're muted, uh, we will unmute you towards the end of this call. Thank you for being um, uh, cooperative. And if you happen to dial back in, uh, please keep your phone on mute. Sister Diane Long, we've waited for this day. Welcome, Dr. Banks and your sweet wife, Carrie. I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll be here as you need me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to all of you this morning. Thank you, Sister Bishop. And um, I do feel the strength of God on this line today. I feel the presence of God. It means so much to me to know that I can gather with people of God, like faith, and be strengthened. I woke up this morning with this song on my mind. You may have muted. No, it's an old, old song, apostolic song. Give up and let Jesus take over. And I won't sing it for you because I'm awfully clogged up from having RSV, but so what? You know, there's still a song in my soul. But at the end it says, and he'll make a way for you. We know there's no quick fix, no easy fix or answer with our prodigals, but if we'll just give up and let Jesus take over, he's promised to make a way. I welcome our dear friends, the banks, this morning, and I'll say a little more about that in a minute after we um, after we go through the lesson. But let me first invite you to something that we're very excited about. In November, November 12th and 13th, we invite you to join us for our Hope Prayer Conference in Alexandria, Louisiana. It's going to be a wonderful time. We are already feeling just that expectancy that God is placed in our spirits. Our speakers are uh, Reverend Jason Sisko and Dr. Banks and his wife are going to be with us. And we just can't wait. We're so excited. So put that on your calendar to be there. You're going to be gathering with those that have prodigals and even prodigals are coming and you're going to be able to be strengthened, and that's what it's all about. We're going to leave uplifted with hope, and that's what we want. So join us. Put that on your calendar and plan to come. You'll be seeing more information posted. Our day today, <clears throat> excuse me, is day 86 for strength to love. This is one of my very, very favorite lessons, Dr. Banks. You really... I mean, this one ministers to me every time that I read this one. Because love does find a way. Love does find a way. No matter what our situation is, when we behave and act and react out of God's love, it finds a way. It can't fail. And so today our scripture is, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? Our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our danger, our sword. Nothing, nothing can separate us from his love. And nothing can separate our prodigals from his love. That gives me so much comfort, even for those I'm still praying for. But even for our son that has been restored, even for myself. That love of God is unexplainable. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. I love you because you've freely given me your grace. You loved me even before the creation of the world. Think about that. I, I can't even fathom that. When I was completely lost and dead in transgressions, you loved me and gave me life. You are love, Lord. Your love is better than life. 
Your love compels me. I looked that up in the Greek and it says it forces me. It forces me. It necessitates. It urges me. When we feel that love for our prodigals, it should even change the way we love or the way we treat them. When they're unlovable, I want to live in your love, Lord, over every virtue. I want to put on love. I want to live with faith and hope and love. Folks, I choose to live there. I lived too long in another place that did not work for me and my prodigal and our family. I want to choose love. Now that I understand a little bit about it, that's where I choose to live. I want to live with faith and hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love never fails. I want others to sense your love in me before I even say a word, especially my son. My son is a gift and blessing from you. I love him so much, Father. This applies to sons or daughters, our spouses or anyone. But as I love him, you love him even more. Your love is perfect. Your love is from everlasting to everlasting. How beautifully this is written, Dr. Banks. He needs your love so much. Love them through me, Lord. I think one of the greatest things that ever happened in my life personally is when I allowed God to wash me of any emotions or feelings that were negative or anything and fill me with his love and submit to him loving our prodigal through me, his way. Let your love flow through me to draw him to you. I know what love is because you've showed it to me through the way you laid down your life and loved me so sacrificially. Father, give me peace to love like you do. I ask for strength to love him when it isn't easy. Help me to love him even, help me to love him enough to be patient with him because love is patient. Help me to speak the truth in love and share your word with him. A lot of this, folks, is denying ourselves. When he does something wrong, help me to love him enough to discipline him because the Lord disciplines those he loves. When he does something right, let me be the first to praise him because love rejoices with truth. I just love the way this is written. I'm going to say it again. Father, you are slow to anger, abounding in love, and forgiving sin and rebellion. I want to love him like that with a love that always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. I love that, Dr. Banks, because one thing that is so important is that for us to protect the dignity of our prodigal, no matter what they're doing, for their sake and our sake. Our family safe because one day God's going to turn it around and we want them to know that we protected their dignity. I love, I choose to love father, just as you chose to love me, fill me afresh with your spirit so that I can do everything in love. Make my love increase and overflow Lord for you and for my son, that he may one day praise you for it and love you with all his of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. I just love this prayer today. And we are honored today. We The last two days we've had mother and son uh, uh, speak about their journeys on uh, with prodigals. And uh, many times we don't, we don't think of and speak of the positive parts of this journey because there are a lot of negatives. But there are pro- there are positive. There's so much positivity in having a prodigal that we need to share that. And today, Doctor Banks has uh, and, and Carrie, welcome, welcome to you, sweet lady. I always can't think of so Carrie much. Banks without thinking. I think about the food she posts. She she, she must be an <laughs> awesome cook, Doctor Banks. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing I don't weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> I know, I know. She makes it, I mean, when she posts her food, I'm like, why can't I live next door to them? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we welcome you folks today. We welcome our friend Jim Lumpkin. Oh, how we love the Lumpkins. It, it, it's just... Uh, yes. 
you can't have Hope Prayer without having Jim and Jelaine um, Lumpkin. They they are heart friends. And we're honored today to have you all. Dr. Banks, you really need no introduction to this group because we speak of you almost every day. We appreciate you. We love you. We honor you. Your book that we pray is uh, like it's, it's just next to the Bible with us. And, folks, he also has another book, Hope Lies Ahead, that he's written with his son, Jeffrey. But avail yourself of any of his material. It's well worth it. I'm going to get out of the way and let you take over. And if you need us, we'll be right on standby. Thank you, Sister Diane and, and Sister Billy Jean, Sister Bishop. I, I'm, oh, my goodness. Um, you, even as you were, were praying through that, um, I, I was tearing up thinking about what God has done because that is an answered prayer. And um, I, before we go any further, may we pray again. Father, please just, Lord, lead in this time. Bless your people. Lord, help us to, to hear your voice alone, the, the beauty of your spirit and, and what you want to impart to each one of us. Lord, we, we bow at your feet and we worship you. Bless us, we pray, um, in, in your truth, in your wisdom, in your way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, one of the reasons I'm so moved is that my son and I, <clears throat> for the past um, three Sundays, my son and I have been preaching the a sermon series together in the church where he now serves as a, a youth pastor. And it has been such a, a journey because this is the very same church where he first came eight years ago um, when, when he was just uh, out of, of detox. And the people loved him there in ways that were such an answer to the prayer. Um, they have a, uh, a substance abuse uh, recovery ministry that he had to go to as part of the halfway house. And what had happened was that he had um, really pushed back against us. I mean, it, uh, we knew the Lord was leading us to go to this place. Carrie had, had found it, and we had had our interview with Jeff, and um, he had already been through detox. Uh, but then we brought him home, and we said, you know, you've, you've done a number of, of other secular uh, rehab situations, and now uh, you're going to try it our way. And he was so down at that point that at first he agreed, but when we went to the place, um, <laughs> well, a couple of things happened. The first was that the lady who was was in charge of um, there were three different uh, recovery houses. Uh, she was in charge over them, and she, as we after we'd had the interview, said, "Could we just all pray together?" And we so sensed the Lord's Spirit in in that prayer that we knew. That was where we were supposed to be. And um, and I want to thank you again before I go any further for, for all of your prayers, uh, especially for our beloved Stephanie, but also for our son and, and for so many others. You have been so faithful, and it has just been a, a, such a witness. Um, just, you know, we, we are all in this together and as we pray together we see the lord move in in such beautiful ways but as we were leaving that recovery house that day uh, our son pushed back and he said i'm not going to jesus camp <laughs> and he uh, finally our daughter's boyfriend of all people uh, uh, not a believer, but he was a, a uh, an Iraqi war vet, and uh, he talked our son into it. He said, basically, just to get them off your back, go ahead and go. You can do anything for a couple months. And Jeff respected him, and, and he went. 
And um, what happened was that um, even when he was there, he kept pushing back. He'd pull up to this ministry at the church, blasting this foul music and flicking a cigarette into the bushes. And he expected them to judge him and say, you can't do that. You, you, you can't do that here. And instead, a lot of these people had been in the same place, and they loved Jesus now, so they understood what he was trying to do. And so they just continued to love him in spite of himself. And so the past three Sundays, being able to preach with him in this church uh, was one of the most um, joy-filled experiences of of my life and i i just am so grateful to god but i also think of of something jeff said um as we were talking with another man uh after we spoke a, a physician who's involved in the recovery ministry in in this community in wilmington north carolina came up to us and he said you know your story really is amazing and jeff acknowledged that but then he said um you know, um, I sometimes I have trouble believing it myself, and uh, because you know it's so sad seeing what so many others go through and what so many families have suffered, and I almost feel guilty. And um, you know that I, I I understand what he's what he's saying in that because. Uh, truly what God has done, God has done. We, we can't take credit for it. It, it. it is all to the praise of, of his glory. And I, I can certainly look at, at my lack of faith a number of times as, as we prayed for Jeff. And um, yet the thing that gives me great encouragement is that even with a little bit of faith, Peter walked on water. Remember, Jesus said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? But even right before that, Peter, with his little faith, he was walking, you know. <laughs> I, I love that because it shows you just what a little bit of faith in, in Jesus' hands can do. And um, so as we, um, I, I just want to encourage you to run to him as you have a prodigal that, that you are loving and um, to, to get your love from him, to get everything that you need from him. And one of the things uh, Sister Long wanted me to mention was, uh, or I know you've been talking about, is how parenting a prodigal affects the family. And this is something that is so important for us to talk about. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, by the way, um, I, I'm the one who does most of the talking in the family. You've probably figured that out. Uh, <laughs> but when Carrie, uh, <laughs> when Carrie has something to say, uh, please listen because it's vital. Uh, but the uh, she has been my my incredible support um, in so many ways. Uh, but I, I want to affirm that this is something that happens often in the most dedicated families. Often we look at ourselves and we say, you know, if only we had done something differently, if only, and, and whereas that's true, you can always find those areas. And certainly our adversary uh, is, is the accuser and, and he will always seek them out and, and, and put them before your head, you know, as if that's the only reason why. But often, you know, this is his effort to, to discourage God's people and uh, to distract them from the good work that they are already doing for him and uh, to use even those we love as, as a wedge. And um, so, you know, this is given this is such sensitive territory for us spiritually and emotionally. Again, we have to, to cling to the Lord in all of this and and this is why also this this prayer today uh to love as jesus loves is so vital because 
uh, if, if nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, which, which we know, uh, we have to get our love from him. Because love in our own strength will, will fail. It, it has to be in his. And so, uh, you know, let's, let's talk about this. I'm coming at this from the perspective of someone who's had uh, an, an addict uh, as, as a son um, and also from someone who is continuing uh, to love and pray for uh, our, our dear daughter uh, that, that she will return to Jesus and she uh, she has a will of iron I mean it, it is you know when Dobson wrote the strong willed child he hadn't met her yet so <laughs> but God is stronger and, and, and uh, she is we are seeing progress. I, I, the analogy I like to le- use is that um, we're waiting with the father on the front porch, uh, and we're watching him. And she she is returning from the far country by faith. We know that she will, but she's not home yet. And so we're watching the father. When is he going to run? You know, when is he going to run? And. Um, we're, you know, just continuing to pray and fast and, and cry out for her. But let, let's, in all of us, talk about tough love for a moment because um, this is something that, especially when you're parenting an addict or a strong-willed child, um, it, it is so tricky because often we hear kind of this one-sided, you know, love has to be tough kind of thing. And, and usually that has to do with accountability and, you know, setting ground rules. And absolutely, we have to do those kinds of things. But we have to be careful of the spirit in which we do them. It has to be the gentle, humble spirit of love. And, you know, love does mean we will discipline. It doesn't mean that, that you know, we're, we're just going to be pushovers, but we have to, again, stay so close to let the Lord lead us and show us in this. And he will. Uh, but, again, this is why prayer matters so much. So what I, I put forward to us is that love also has to be tough on us. Uh, it, it has to be tough on us to cause us to, to move in his strength and, and not our own, um, to love sacrificially where, you know, we, we'd rather take that, that money and put it in a new RV or, or whatever in, instead of uh, putting it into, uh, you know, rehab and we're angry about that. And um, I, I totally understand that. Uh, but again, the Lord will show us, the Lord will lead us. And we also have to love each other, especially husband and wife in this. Uh, it, it's like rescuing someone who, you know, is, is being pulled under. Uh, unless you're grabbing onto the Lord and grabbing onto each other, then one of you can be pulled under in this as well and so your love for the lord has to come first and then your love for each other and then your love for your prodigal and i think this is really tough sometimes especially um for for moms in this but uh we've also seen this with with dads but uh one of the things that i really wish looking back and i I learned this, the Lord showed this to me when when Jeff and I were writing Hope Lies ahead together, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, was that there were times where I was so busy trying to fix my son and and to preach to him and correct him when what I should have been doing was um, just working on being dad and just loving him and it was hard because he was an addict and his you know his his faults and addiction was right there right in front of us so 
I, you know, I, instead of reacting at times, I needed to respond. And if I had just sometimes, I think, taken the time to, uh, again, just be dad, you know, throw a ball with him, um, take him away for something that, just for us, um, uh, I, I think I would have been more effective because often he equated my faith with this kind of judgmental legalism. And, you know, that's uh, often when I speak with him, it's like, well, Jim, if you love Jesus, you know, you, you won't do this. And he was up against something that was so big and, and so hard um, that he needed, I think, a number of people to love him in the Lord and, and to correct some of those lies that the enemy was feeding him because we we did love him and in in many ways but sometimes he had difficulty seeing it and even today our kids look back on some things from their childhood Carrie and I were just talking about this yesterday and they have this picture that that isn't quite right and it's because you know the 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 devil gets in there and he he skews things sometimes but Carrie was better at this naturally than I was in terms of loving the kids because she had an alcoholic dad at times growing up. And her mom is a prayer warrior, just a faithful, loving woman. And um, Carrie was able, I think, to kind of instinctively learn how to do that. And um, I was sort of this hard driving type A uh, kind of guy who was um, just at times, um, you know, thinking that my son could, could overcome this through sheer will. And uh, because that's how, you know, I had done so many things and how I had, you know, said no to getting drunk or smoking pot or, or whatever when I was growing up in California in the, in the 60s and 70s. And um, what I didn't realize it was actually that was the Lord at work in me and, and that that was what he needed uh, as well. Uh, because it was only through his strength that he could overcome. But um, as we stay close to, to Jesus in this, as we, as we really fight to pray and, and fight to praise him, um, and, and, and that's where I think our wills, you know, we really, I mean, we, we just have to keep coming back and and keep giving the Lord our all in this. And um, as we do that, he meets us unexpectedly. He has um, gifts for us as, as, as we come to him uh, that we may not even know at the time. I mean, sometimes I, I think of how I was praying for our kids. And I'd be praying and I didn't feel like anything was changing. And then I'd walk out of the room and I'd get down the hall. And then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, it was like Jacob, the Lord was in this place and I didn't know it. You know, it's like, I mean, it, it took that long for, for it to sink in. And sometimes I think a lot longer. But what I began to realize was that one of the gifts the Lord had for me was peace in the storm um you know the storm may have still been raging but but if you know you're in the boat with jesus um that's all that matters and he has ways of speaking peace to you know the the storms in our souls even when the circumstances haven't changed yet and for Carrie, it was a gift of faith that he had. Uh, she uh, she believed that God was going to use Jeff in ministry someday. 
and I really couldn't see it because they'd taken such a different path. But, Carrie, is, is there anything you, you'd like to say uh, about that for a moment? Uh, sure. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. J James and I are in different locations. Um, I'm actually at camp with our grandson, and I'm, I'm having a wonderful week here with him. But one of the things that um, that I learned... Can, and Carrie, can I is, jump in on that for just, just a moment? Oh, yeah. Please pray. Yeah. Please pray for Austin. Uh, his, she, he is Stephanie's son, and he has told Carrie he wants to be baptized. He's only six. He wants to be baptized. He wants to follow Jesus. And um, pray that, please just pray the Lord will move in this and draw this precious, uh, again, strong-willed boy, but um, such a sweet boy. Please pray he will draw him to him. Um, and sorry, sweetie, I just felt like I should ask for that. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, one of the things that I've had um, on my heart this morning, and I want to talk to moms especially, is that I think that as moms, we do love our prodigals and our children um, fiercely. I think we have this crazy love that is hard to explain unless you're a mom, right? But I think that in that process of loving our prodigals, I think sometimes we get in the way of what God is trying to do. And I think that it's really hard and scary to get out of the way and let God do what he needs to do in our prodigal's lives. And I think that that requires obedience to what God is nudging us to do. And it also requires trust that God is at work even when we don't know it. When, when Jeffrey came to faith, James and I weren't even around. We weren't even in the same state. And we had no idea what, what God was up to that night. But um, mm -hmm. it, it, it was amazing how, how God was still able to intervene, even though I wasn't present, right? Because <laughs> I think as moms, we feel like, you know, we need to fix them. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to be present 24-7. We need to, you know, always be there. And, and, and that is true as far as our prayers for our prodigals, but we don't always have to be there physically and, uh, you know, in their face, uh, forcing our will on them, if that makes any sense. So that's just, that's just something that I've really had on my heart this morning, and I, I hope that it helps um, some of the moms that are listening this morning. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Um, you know, she she just, again, believed that God was going to use Jeffrey in ministry someday. And it wasn't it wasn't this idea from her own head or heart. We hadn't talked about that for Jeffrey. You know, I think in part because he had been, you know, addicted for seven years, in and out of rehab 11 times, and uh, we didn't know, I mean, a career path that, I mean, he had, he had burned through all his college money, and um, we hadn't talked about really Jeffrey um, following me in, in ministry. Um, we just wanted him to do what the Lord wanted him to do and, and what the Lord was, was calling him to do. Um, and lo and behold, but, you know, another thing I'm, I'm kind of laughing about as I'm thinking about this is that uh, Carrie, uh, another gift God had for her was um, one night she was bringing Jeff back from this city, Wilmington, where he 
was living at the time. And Jeff is a youth pastor today in the same city where he once abused heroin. So this is what God is able to do. It's it's amazing. And uh, but Jeff had stolen uh, sixteen hundred dollars from his sister, and she he'd been living with her, and she kicked him out. And Carrie came down to get him. I had something going on in Durham, and um, so I couldn't come down. And when she's bringing him back, it's late at night. We tell about this in Hope Lies Ahead, but Carrie got to see that night um, four angels that accompanied the car. She felt like they were actually carrying the car. Um, when she exited the I-40 onto I- Highway 147 leading into Durham. And uh, Jeff was passed out in, you know, uh, uh, just in the passenger seat. Um, and, you know, I just, I want to share this because uh, it's kind of funny in a way because, you know, I'm, I'm the pastor and the author and I haven't seen the names yet, but my wife gets to see four of them. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, God has ways of humbling us, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you, you got to just laugh. But, um, I, I, again, I think to, to wrap up, I, I just mentioned uh, a couple of things. Uh, that when you're the parent of a prodigal, sometimes you go through, uh, I, let's talk about the restoration process, because Carrie mentioned that and, and what God was doing. And it, it, it was entirely in his own strength. We didn't make it happen. Um we prayed for it. We did what we could to put things in place so that he was around people of faith. We prayed some very specific prayers and um, in prayers for prodigals. One of the things that amazed me was uh, about five years after the book was written, um, maybe a little later, we uh, we did the audio version of the book. Actually, it was about eight years Um and as I was reading through so many of these prayers, I had to stop because I realized here was an answered prayer and, and here was an answered prayer and here was an answered prayer. And I, I share that with kind of two things in mind. One, that God is faithful to answer prayer and we're not even aware of it. And the second is that we are still praying for a prodigal in our life. And God's timing is always so far beyond us. But um, speaking of the restoration process in in Jeff's heart and life, and and also in our own family together, uh, the the healing that God has done, it takes time. And I think we have to give God just time and space to restore trust, for example. Um, to to help us, um, you know, love and realize the the healing work that that he has done. There were so many times where I'd question whether my son had had truly been set free. And one day, uh, he said, "What's the matter, Dad? Don't <laughs> don't you believe that Jesus has set me free?" And, <laughs> I mean, that, uh, let me tell you, that, <laughs> I think the best expression that comes to mind is shut my mouth. <laughs> and um, I, I, I just, as, I, I think we want to have a time for, for any questions and answers, so I, I want to kind of leave you with this thought. Uh, one time... Uh, Jeff, it was around Thanksgiving, and Jeff had been clean for a couple of years. And uh, we, we really believe that, that the Lord set him free again, that God wastes nothing, that even the mistakes that Jeff made 
uh, some of the terrible things he did and went through, God is able to use uh, to actually make him, he's a better person for what he went through. You know, Satan may have intended it for evil, but God used it for good in, in his heart and in his life. And uh, still, as we were realizing this had happened, uh, there, there were two things. I, um, one was that the Lord showed us afresh what it means to be a new creation in Christ. Uh, how deep and beautiful that is. Um, you know, a person may still struggle with a particular sin, uh, but deep inside the, the truest measure of their identity, the, as the Lord is leading them and calling them out of that, is that they belong to him. And, um, uh, you know, the operative verse is, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Uh, the old is gone. The, the new has come. And so, you know, I, I think sometimes the world's way of thinking, I remember being told your son is an addict. That's what, that's all he'll ever be. I remember people speaking things like, well, when you start as young as he did, then the chances of survival aren't good. Um, and I had allowed that, the world's way of thinking, to affect my own thinking too much when the truth of the matter is God made him and God defines who he is, not the world. Even some of the world's well-intentioned ways of trying to help um but uh, so on that note I'd, I'd leave you with this when when jeff uh i pulled jeff aside one night and i was cautious um and trying to make sure just kind of checking him to make sure that that he was doing okay and um this was at Thanksgiving. We'd gone to we fill up the cars. We we're gassing them up. We we're just talking, and I said, "Remember, son, we have an adversary, and he's powerful." And Jeff looked me in the eye, and if you've been the parent of an addict, to have your son look you in the eye directly with clear eyes and a you know, a steady gaze, that means something. And he, he looked me in the eye and he said, I know, Dad, he has power. And then he, he finished with this, but he has no authority. But he has no authority. And of course, what immediately comes to mind are Jesus' words. Uh, in that moment, I knew that God had done a transformational work in my son's heart and life. In Jesus' words, all authority, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. And uh, so it is in that power that we go to pray for our kids. I want to just pray for a moment, and then we can talk about any questions and answers. Lord, your power, your name, your authority, your love, Lord, oh, without you, we are hopelessly lost and dead in our transgressions. And with you, we are saved. And we praise you. And we affirm you are able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And Lord, even with a little bit of faith. So have mercy. We pray on our children. Have mercy and, and, and draw them, Lord, our prodigals, whether they be our children, our parents, our loved ones, our spouses, you know. But, oh, Lord, we call out to you and we run to you and we worship you. Our beautiful Savior, keep us close. You are the best answer to prayer when answers haven't come yet. 
And even when answers that we have prayed for uh, do not come, you, you, Lord, are greater than all. And so we cling to you and, and we praise you and we worship you, our beautiful Savior, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, Dr. Banks, that has been so rich and powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Just that last part, unmuted, it belongs to him. All authority. That should reassure us, and uh, I thank you for just sharing that. I do have a question I want to ask you, and uh, you and Carrie both can answer this together, or one of you. And maybe it's a loaded question, but it's someone that I like to ask. Do you feel that you are better in your walk with God for having a prodigal? Oh, wow. <laughs> what a great question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it has, again, caused, it has shown us the, the dependence that we need to have moment by moment on the Lord. Carrie, any thoughts on right. that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think I think I, I learned how to pray um, mm-hmm. because uh, we had a prodigal and, and because we still have one. But I, I think also uh, we love other prodigals because of what we've been through. I think God right. has given us... Um, a love for 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 prodigals that I, I don't think we would have had otherwise. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you know, I guess one of mine and Don's, and Don, if you or uh, Brother Lumpkin, if y'all want to just jump in here, Jim, on this note, uh, I think one of our favorite things to say, which people don't understand, it sounds so contradictory, is we are blessed and privileged to be the parent of a prodigal. Now, that makes no sense. I understand if you're not where we are or where where we, uh, you know, we are in our thinking because we have some hard, hard days. And there are situations not fixed, so we have some hard times. But we're, what the work God has done in us, individually and together, we wouldn't take anything for it. We wouldn't take anything because the depth of uh, our relationship with God would not have been without without having a prodigal. So we're we're grateful God God has trusted us, and even with the ministry that we're in now. And Carrie, I have another question for you. You had a son and a daughter as prodigals, mm-hmm. and uh, if if this is if this is too tough or whatever just you know or whatever i just want to ask is there a difference in having a a daughter for a prodigal than a son for a prodigal vice versa is there a difference um i i yeah i I think so in in our particular case i realized that i was not praying enough for our daughter because our son's um, sin or his need was so much greater because oh not greater it was so much um, uh, more evident because his issues were were you know it was addiction it was drugs and so those things were were clearly in front of us where I think Stephanie um, you know if you want to call it sin or her her uh, tendency or her weakness to be far from the Lord, I think, is a little bit more subtle. Um, and I I think I have more in common with Stephanie. I find it easier to spend time with her, even though she's mm-hmm. far from the Lord. She and I just, yeah, I find it easier to spend, spend more time with her. I think mainly because we're both women. Right. And, and James, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's different uh, just uh, because our kids are different you know they're different individuals and they have different issues Um, but it's also different because um, I think our daughter is um, 
she, uh, uh, like, like Carrie was saying, there are some things that are more subtle, but uh, also she tends to react uh, very fiercely to some things, and I, I get that uh, because she is my daughter. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, you know, we have the same kind of sense of humor and, and, um, it's just, it's so tricky. Um, you know, when you have a fierce daughter, uh, and being able to be a tender dad to, to love her to the Lord, um, I, I, yeah, I, that's why, again, the key thing in all of this is, is to let him lead us, let the Spirit lead us moment by moment with each child, with each individual situation. Because even when the answers don't come, we, we have to remember that prayer is about so much more than just requests or answers. It's about relationship. And this has been the great thing for us in this, that it is that relationship with the Lord that has has thrived in, in many ways as a result of this time, even though the answers haven't come uh, in, in her particular instance. Um, still, and, and I would have said the same thing before our son returned, you know, because still he made himself known in, in unexpected places and uh, the, you know, where else are we to go? He alone has the words of eternal life. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and we don't ever have any idea of, we can't predict the next moment with the prodigal. So we must be listening for his voice and staying in prayer and in tune with him. We well, must. I Is there anyone else that would like to ask a question? Um, Sister Billy Jean, uh, anyone else want to jump in? Diane, uh, could I comment right here? Yes. Uh, if I may. Uh, one thing that we've noticed with our prolico, and of course I didn't introduce myself, this is uh, Diane Long's husband, better known. <laughs> well, <laughs> my name is Don Long, better known as Diane Long's husband. <laughs> I love you, Don. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> So having said all that, I just want to say that the process, <laughs> the process of a prodigal and a parent uh, is a process for both of us. And I think that this process here depends on the length of the process, depends on the length of the time that they were out there. Now, this could vary, uh, but I just might want, to, want to be very transparent here uh, with myself. Of course, I've always loved my son dearly, uh, but after he became a prodigal and he was out there for so long and he began to do things that angered me and he began to do things against his mother that angered me. And of course, that's my first love right there other than Jesus Christ. And uh, I became very angry with my prodigal. And this lasted for many years. Uh, I had to pray long, hard prayers about this. And so having said that, uh, when he finally did return, um, as, as well as the process was for him, uh, getting back to Christ, coming back to the Father, being restored, it was also a process for me. It took me a while. It took me a long while to begin to be able to trust him. Uh, I did not trust him for a long time, and it's only just been recently where God has released me to uh, renew that trust in him, and that love in him is, is coming back stronger than ever before. But I remember one time when when there was a time, and I have mentioned this, and some of you had heard this testimony before, when my son had made me so angry and, and something had happened that... I, I was really beside myself. I didn't know what to do, so I went up into a prayer room. Uh, and in that prayer room, I asked God, I said, Lord, I don't want to do something that would be wrong. I don't want to hurt anyone. 
Um, and if I ever heard a voice from God, I heard a voice right there. He said, you're not dealing with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. And right there, I began to let go of my son. I gave him to God. I, be- I quit trying to reason with him, and I began to pray urgent prayers. As a matter of fact, I have always loved to pray. Uh, my wife and I were teachers of new converts in our church for 30 years. It was after we, we, we retired from that, and uh, we began our prodigal ministry. And when we began our prodigal ministry is when we began to, when I began to intercede, and I began to intercede in prayer. And I was never an intercessor until that happened. And so for the past several years, God has moved me into intercessory prayer which is a new level, not a new level, but a higher level of just normal prayer. And I'm I'm not the same person. So this has been a process for me as well as for my son. I just wanted to bring that in because I want to let you know that when your son or when your daughter or when your husband or your wife or whoever comes home, depending on how long they have been out there, it's going to be a process for both of you. I just thought that would be something worth mentioning. Thank you, Don. That is so helpful, and we are so grateful for you and Diane and your ministry. Wow, how the Lord has used you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother uh, Dr. Uh, Banks. Thank you for those kind words. And uh, your testimony earlier was so mightily received. And, uh, Diane, we're going to turn this back over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I remember I remember that time when um, you didn't feel that love, but I want to say you showed that love. Our son did not know that. And I think that is exemplary of what God, we talked about today, our um, lesson. God loved through you when you didn't feel it. Am I right, Dr. Banks? Yes. Absolutely. Um, There are just times where, um, again, uh, I I think of our son. um, He knew he was loved, and he knew that we were loving him, uh, you know, trying to love him back to the Lord. But things can just get so rough and raw and difficult. And uh, it takes a while to sort all that out. Right. And the only way we can do that is through the Holy Ghost, it's through the, the Spirit of God directing us, because our emotions can go, can just go haywire. Exactly. I remember one time, and one time I told God, I said, if you can do anything with this complicated mess, you can have it. And it's yours. And, and I was not in a good place then. I was really kind of. You know, I, I was I was not in a good place, so I just I said that sort of with an attitude with God, and I'm so grateful He knows this, but that's where I was. And um, you know what? When I gave up and let Him fully take over, then He began to tur- turn things. So I believe God's able to handle our emotions and the way we feel. And so I'm grateful to Him today for the work in our lives as a family. He continues to work. I'm just grateful. Is there anyone else would like to say something? Um, jump in. Sister Diane, I, I have everyone um, muted, but um, our leaders, but I would like to greet Brother and Sister Lumpkin. And then I have a, sure. a, a question, thought. Go ahead, Brother Lumpkin. Well, I have <clears throat> good Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Uh, Brother Banks, uh, once again, just challenged us and blessed us with his quiet spirit and confidence in God. And when he ended a few minutes ago with that prayer, uh, he said something about, when we don't see the answer 
are the answers that we're praying for. I think he followed that up by saying, uh, obviously, Jesus is the answer. And I, I just, that was just kind of in passing, but I, I it just hit me that through this whole process with, with our prodigals, we pray for specific evidences of God answering our prayers. We want to see the fruit. We want to see the changes. And sometimes we can get disappointed when our prayers or the way we see this unfolding doesn't, doesn't come to pass the way we want. But the bottom line is Jesus is the answer. It's, it's, it's not these different scenarios that we imagine as being the answer when it's all said and done. Jesus is the answer regardless of, of him answering or not answering our specific requests. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I just needed to abide with that. He is the answer. Yes. And he knows, he, he sees farther, he knows more, he sees the end from the beginning. And if we could ever just let go and let God be God, we'd keep our hair and it would stay brown instead of white. And things would just be so much better if we just... <laughs> believe that he is the answer and however that plays out he knows best but anyway good to be on here with all of you this has been anointed since the very beginning thank you jesus thank you God. Uh, brother james it's so good to hear your voice and uh, so grateful for you and, and Jelaine and the time we, we had there and you have been in my prayers to your brother and I, you were right on the mark uh, that I that was the point I was wanting to make when I said that that he is the best answer when you know even if the answers do not come that we long for because uh, there's a line from a hymn um, that uh, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And these are deeper truths. Um, but, but I have even seen parents who have lost a child to addiction um, go the route. These are believing Christian families. So I've, I've seen both directions, you know, where where one person despairs, um, but where another ultimately finds God at work even in that difficult place and and his redemption, his power to move and save and and work good uh, even in that hard, hard place. And he is faithful, and, and that is where you're exactly, that you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Banks, this is Sister Billie Jean Bishop, and I'm in the journey with prodigals that are on their way back. I'm on the porch. We have a little porch on our house, and sometimes I sit out there with a cup of coffee and just think about them coming home and since the journey of 90 days of prayer my son has returned to uh, Louisiana he was gone for several years and I believe my prayers brought he and his wife and my grandbabies right to my door they live 30 miles from me <laughs> but I every day every day that we pray and we're on day 86 We've prayed every day. We've taught every day, except for the weekends. And I, I try to pick back up those weekends with a personal time and to take it to the personal altar as much as I can. But there is something God spoke to me this morning that gave me understanding. And he just sweetly said, Daughter, 
And when he calls me daughter, I know that he's speaking to me personally. But I'm going to share this with all of you. Daughter, he's not the same boy that left your house when he backslid. And the scripture that came to mind, I was looking at tomorrow's lesson, is found in Job 22 and 26. And you have it written in your devotions in the hiding place. And it says to pray that they find delight in the Almighty and that she or he lift their face to you. And that that is what I pray for my prodigals. Because I have lived for God many years. My, mine has been away for my oldest for probably 20 years and my youngest for nearly 10. But it says in Job, it says, for then... Then, that's a process, shalt they have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. They're in a process. Think of all the preaching, the messages, the times in prayer that you have had since they've been gone. They're, they're not the same people. But the beauty of all of this, that I'm so encouraged, and thank you for bringing faith once again to us and all of you, and every testimony that we've had for nearly three months, we brought on as many testimonies to build faith. But is that today's the day of salvation, where they are, all the experiences, the broken relationships, the lost jobs, the, the lost um, health, everything that they bring to who they are today, God is able to save them. And he does restore but they do become new creatures in Christ Jesus. When we have a prodigal return, for me personally, it infuses me with faith that God can save to the uttermost. That God's redemptive power in his name and the power of the blood, that he is able to save even when someone turns away. But all the years and all the miles that our prodigals have put on and walked through... God meets them where they are, and he can go back, and he casts their sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Thank God he doesn't hold our sins or the sins of our prodigals against us, and we do begin fresh and anew. And that's what I've gained in this spring 90 days of prayer. Love will find a way. I've learned to love. You listed in today's devotion that you wrote on day 86 35 times the word love. And I, I typed it in and put it in our comments. All of you, you need to go into your Bibles. Date today's date. Underline these scriptures. And remember, love will find a way. And God will meet them right where they are. You know, the beautiful thing is to understand that He loves them even more than we do. Yes. And that as we are on this road, he loves us with that kind of love so we can go to him and get everything we need, including the faith. You know, when our faith is small, the disciples pray, Lord, increase our faith. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, he, we, again... I think as we rest in him, then he pours all of these things into us that that we need. I think the common thing that I've heard from all of the returned prodigals that we've heard testimonies of, and back returned prodigals that I know, is the thought that I did not realize how much God really did love me. And when they realize that, when they come to know him and take delight in him and lift their faces to him, that will be the, the, the restoration and the journey. Praise the Lord. Um, I know I have all of you muted. Um, I want to be very respectful of Dr. Banks and his wife's time. Um, I'm not quite sure, but Dr. Banks, it's like a, a beautiful river. If I if I open up the dam, we're gonna be we're gonna be here praying and talking because that's my my precious group of praying 
friends is that, that we could pray literally on the phone for hours. We could speak words of faith and encouragement to each other. But what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to please message me your requests. Those names that are not in our prayer j bottles, our prayer jars, we're going to continue to pray over them. I pray over as many as I can personally every Thursday morning at the altar at where I attend church. I want you to remember the announcements that Monday, Alicia Hayes, our author of the book, Tell Hell I'm Not Coming. She's part of our Partners in Prayer team, a great intercessor. She has a powerful, riveting story of her returning as a backslider and for God comforting her in the loss of, of family uh, that were so close to her and how she overcame and pushed back hell in order to serve God. And she's writing another book, Tell Heaven. <laughs> Tell Heaven I'm Coming, so you don't want to miss Monday. Tuesday is our last day. And that's a day of fasting. Dr. Banks, we're going to come together. We're going to include Stephanie in that. Well, I, I've already got Stephanie's name in our in our prayer jar. So um, I'm about 45 minutes from Brother and Sister Long in Leesville. So we are praying. She comes to my mind, especially this spring. Just her name. I've never met her, of course. But she'll come to mind and because we're all connected. We're all into the presence, into the throne room of God. And I I couldn't begin to thank all the people that have prayed and fasted and come on the line and testified. But Tuesday is going to be a very impacting day. Uh, Dr. Banks, I don't know if Sister Long has shared this with you, but there was a powerful prophecy that went forth that... God was going to do something powerful on the 45th day, and we've seen backsliders come. Every every week we get a Monday report of someone's uh, backslider praying back through this. It, recently we had brothers come through the back door and pray back through the same day, and uh, they didn't even know they were coming to church. Pastor and his wife, beautiful testimony, um, other powerful testimonies. But it was prophesied that on day 90, it was going to be like a faucet that was going to be fully opened. And for a full year, there is going to be a, a drawing and pulling and uh, uh, prodigals coming back. So I have asked um, Brother Blake Fletcher from the Pentecostals of Alexandria and, of course, Brother and Sister Long and anyone else. We're going to, to allow the Holy Ghost to move through us and continue to put this prophetic word into our fiber because we want to act upon, we want to be ready. Churches are getting ready for the backsliders. They're, they're preparing special Bible studies. They're preparing mentors and disciples to pull them into a family to ensure that that prodigal is, is, is given the strength and fellowship and love that they need. The church has made herself ready. And there, there's more, more work to do. That's why this conference coming up is so imperative. Because I believe that God will continue to help guide us and give us the skill and knowledge to, to know how to walk the walk of restoration. Um, so we will take every request that we can um, after Brother Blake uh, ministers. We will pray. Also, those of you that want to dial in to any of our other prayer lines, we take prayers for prodigals, for backsliders every day. Uh, there isn't a prayer call that goes by that we don't pray for um, our children. Sister Long, Brother Long, thank you. Brother and Sister uh, Lumpkin, it'll be good to see you. I was at the Prayers for Prodigals conference in Little Rock, and it was such a blessing, such a privilege to meet Dr. Banks face to face. So um, I, I will unmute the line to say th you all can say thank you. And But if you'd keep your comments, because I do want to re be respectful of Dr. Banks and his. Thank you, Sister Carrie Banks. I, I appreciate you and, and your, oh, your kind words. And this has been beautiful. Again, I would open it up for prayer. We have prayed all morning. It has been a powerful anointing. So rest assured that you can send us pr uh, updated urgent requests. We prayed for a backslider that's in ICU, and we're going to believe for a good report. But if you would like to say thank you to Dr. Banks and his wife and to Brother and Sister Long, 
uh, Brother Lumpkin that's on the line, you, you please uh, take your liberty. Thank you, Lord. Anybody, an opportunity to say thank you. <laughs> yes, this is Sister Dan. I thank all of you very much for this. Praise God. Gives me a lot of hope. Yes. <laughs> Good. Hello, this is Sister Shaleen, and I would like to thank you as well, and you have given me a lot of hope myself. Um, thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you, Sister Thank you. This is Sister This is Sister Beauty, um, and I just thank you so much. I, this has just been so encouraging, and, and just like they said, giving me so much hope. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Dee. Thank you. This is Sister Way. I just want to thank you. It's given me a lot of hope. I've tried Al-Anon and all of that, but this is the one thing that's really helped me. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your encouraging word. Um, it means a lot to me. I have three backslidden children. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lord. God bless you. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Jesus. I appreciate everybody that's dialed in today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, um, on the little bit of a journey that I've been, I didn't start in the beginning with y'all, but I've learned a lot about myself. <laughs> and I just praise the Lord and thank you for this book. Yes. I bless you. Beautiful. I put in the links how to order the book. You can order it from White Steeple Music there in the POA. And uh, I, if you go back in the comments on Facebook, you can. It, you, I'm on my second book, Dr. Banks. My first book is torn and tattered and the edges rolled back and <laughs> your signature, your autographs yes. in there. <laughs> yes. Sister Bishop, let me just end it with this way, if I may. Yes. Folks, you cannot imagine what a, a, a compass is like with all of us. Yes. <laughs> Come join us. Come be with us. Oh, yes. Let us love on one another. Let us get to know one another. It's like a great big reunion. You leave restored, renewed, replenished. It's wonderful. I cannot wait for all of us to get together. So join us in November. We will start our next journey, uh, Sister Bishop, October 1st, right? Yes. And um, by God's grace, we plan on it. But Please make the time and the trip, the effort to meet with us in November. Let's all join together this great family that we formed mostly online. Mm -hmm. But come be with us and let's just just unite. Let's unite. I can't wait for that day Amen. and that time. Thank you, Sister Diane. That's perfect Amen. way to end. Lord, we give you thanks and give you praise. There's such an undergirding of sustaining grace. God, there's a hope, Lord, that comes, Lord, from heaven, and it has infused us with a hope, Lord, beyond, and a prayer, and a far-reaching imagination, God, that you're able to draw my prodigal back to yourself. Lord, I thank you, God, for the loose and releasing of the gift of faith. I pray for Stephanie today. I lift my voice yes. and ask you, God, to continue to draw her, Lord. Every word that her mother and father has prayed over her, God, that she would live out the very words, God, and her brother that has prayed for her. Others, Lord God, let her take delight in you. You. Let her find that place of love, God, and walk out in love, God. Lord, that she would, Lord, discover how much you really do love her. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, Dr. Banks and his wife, their ministry, the book. God, let it be world far-reaching. Let it continue. Let the word of God that's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, let it come alive in these scriptures and help us to be 
better believers, better parents, better lovers of souls, Lord God. I thank you for hope today. I give you praise, oh God. I thank you for saving my children. I thank you, God, for doing the work. Prepare us for this conference. I pray, God, for the days ahead. Lord God, that you bring everyone and make a way for everyone to be at that conference in November. Lord Jesus, I believe there is going to be a tsunami effect that is going to, God, go around the world. God, you're doing a quick work, and I give you honor and praise for it in the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the ministers that have joined us today. It is an honor to have you. God bless you. We're closing out Facebook. Um, we will keep this. It will be recorded, and you can go back. We're, we're doing our best uh, to get all of the 90 days of prayer on YouTube so that they will be saved off of Facebook, and you can go listen at any time and share that. So thank you. Thank you so much.